the Joe Rogan experience. The thing I'm excited, I don't have to bring it back to my stupid plug, but the garden show. Uh, I haven't been, I used to do it. It was normal to do the garden for me before, which is not a good thing. Right. Like I remember Chris Rock saying to me once after a show at the garden, he's like, you, you like, this is like a club for you where you try shit out now. <laughs> Cause I did it like five times in a week. I just take right. the subway, take the C train up, do the garden and leave. Like I don't party after I just do right, show. Right, right, right. But it's, that went away and I hadn't been there for a while. But now to me, this one show there is like, this is a very exciting thought Yeah. to just do one. And the set I've prepared for it is not a rock star set. It's it's pretty gritty. It's pretty. I mean, it all kills. It's similar to what I saw at the creek. Yeah, last time. I've been working on it since. So there's a lot of new stuff. Yeah. But it's um, the idea of being surrounded by these eighteen thousand people in this in this elite arena, and saying some of this stuff. But but also knowing that I've crafted it, so it's not just reckless. You know what I right, mean? Right, right, right. I, yeah. I'm really, I'm really excited. About, I don't. Thirty eight years in comedy, I don't get that excited. But I'm really. excited I'm excited about for it too. I, I, I love that you've made this return, and then you know you experienced a bunch of resistance, but now it's kind of gone. You know. And yeah, just, just might just keep just, doing it. Just keep yeah, doing it. Yeah, and now yeah. you're you're doing shit that's really being recognized. Like you won a fucking Emmy. Yeah, I got a Grammy. I got to want a, a Grammy, couple Grammy rather. since I came Grammy. back. Yeah, yeah, that it's was amazing. nice. It's nice. And I think you won a Grammy for the special. This it was very funny, but I think the next one was I think Sorry was even better. Thank you, man. I really Thank do. You. Sorry well, that, was that, amazing. That got nominated for a Grammy, so we'll see Sorry. what happens. Whatever. I hope it wins. Yeah, we'll see. I hope, I'd love it if you yeah. won two years in a row. I want to see nice. people get crazy. Like, fucking you know, whatever. bullshit. Whatever. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I got so angry when people were calling out your uh, that leak set yeah, yeah, when people was... are mad. Because to me, it was like, that's what he's always done. This is great stuff. Like, yeah. these are, But not only that, you hadn't done stand-up in 10 months. I'm like, this is the this is the seeds of a fantastic hour. Well, it was and you're a, only seeing, like, the, literally the first couple of right. times he's even said these things aloud in public. I literally was having a conversation with another comedian and came up with the bits and went on stage and did them. So it was the first time I'd done them. And I... I just got so excited to be back on stage because I had yeah. taken a long time off and it was and there was resistance coming back. But I was it was I was in a club with my crowd for the first time, and so I was. Uh, it was the only thing I regret is it was reckless because my life was very in, uh, precarious. Things were tough and things were tough for my kids, so that created a bigger, huge stink bomb than anything else that had even happened. The set did. Yeah, the set was really really, really hard. So, I, I given how uh, things were. I probably could have made jokes about a couple other things. I don't believe ah. I did anything wrong. <laughs> you did what you always I done. do. I've always done this. The way it works is I say stuff that is the wrong thing to say. I hear the resistance to it, and then I and then Figure I work it with it and work with it. And it takes a few shows for it to be a safe bit to do. But there's a few audiences that that you know, and that audience actually didn't <laughs> didn't mind it. But it, it's not for regular. Consumption. It's like watching it's somebody ready. practice piano, yeah, and going like he sucks, or or it's not. It wasn't supposed to. The I think it's really bad that we don't have these barriers anymore. Where there's speech that's for these few people. There's speech that we're gonna we're gonna have a fun conversation where we're gonna get a little crazy. It's not for the whole world to see. Well, what was infuriating to me was people that know that they know what you're saying, yeah, and they went after you. I was like, you motherfucker. Yeah. You know, there's people that I won't talk to to yeah. this day because of that. Wow. I was like, I'm not talking to you. Like, unless you want to make some, like, big public apology or you want to apologize <laughs> to me and tell me why you did it and what real feelings of insecurity and jealousy. But Tim Nobody Dillon. Nobody can do that, though. Tim Dillon put a great post on his page about what's really going on. Yeah. He put a great post on his Instagram, and that's when I became friends with Tim Dillon. Right. He wrote, you're getting a bunch of people that are mediocre comedians yeah. and that are attacking him, not really because of what he's saying, but because he's great and mm -hmm. because they hate the fact that he was getting any attention at all and that should be theirs. And now they find some chance to move up in the social structure. Yeah, that, that, That's what it felt like to, to me. To me, all of that is totally true and it makes me understand it. In other words, it makes me feel sympathy. It makes me go like... All right, if that's what you need to do, that's what you that's what that's, you got to do. It's it's uh, it, I get I, that. I, I would prefer to hang out with somebody who doesn't need to do that, but I get it. And I can't I can't be around them because it, no, you I can understand do, that. You can do that again. You could do that again. Sure. You know, it's like having a snake in the room. 
Like you can have a snake yeah. in the room as long as I you mean, keep the lights a, on. Aside from my shit, the thing that was a drag to me about comedy in the last few years was people who, any comedian who's out in the world saying that comedian shouldn't be saying these things. Yeah. That's a traitor to comedy. Well, they always that's suck. Not a, that's not, they're not a real comedian. And none of them are good. They've learned some tricks so they can right. seem good and they might have a big audience. But they're not. A, they're, they don't love this, right? And they are. That's a fucked up thing to do. It's a fucked up I thing think. to do, and it's always coming from a place of jealousy. Yes, and also it's, it's never. It's always like, happening to somebody who's already deeply besieged. Somebody yes. who's already the whole world. Of course, when you see the whole world coming down on somebody for something they said, and then you go, "Man, me, I'm going to say the same thing." Exactly. That's about you. That has nothing to do with how you really feel about what they said. It has nothing to do. It's just that you want to be heard in your circle saying it also because you see that you can get a little something from it.